Right, so I think before we uh, we make a start, it's probably best to introduce ourselves, right? So um, I'm Matt. I've been in delivery for 16 plus years now, which is probably quite sad when you think about it. Um, but I've worked in numerous industries um, from uh, engineering through to law and then into tech. And then, then obviously recently moved into consultancy and started uh, working in parts of the UK to say. Um, I'll hand over to, to Debbie. Hello, I'm Debbie. A very similar story to Matt, um, been in IT and um, agile delivery probably for a similar amount of time. Again, various different companies, um, largely in, in Leeds, um, and came to Burundo as a consultant literally a year ago. I think it's about a year and a week. So, yeah, and this project was exactly what I was hoping for when I, I moved. So, hey. Over to Ben. Oh, thank you. And you've got this wonderful picture here of me dabbing or, or whatever that is. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. It was all I could find at, at uh, short notice. Um, I'm no, Ben Collier, so I'm head of development at UKHSA. Um, I've been with the organisation about a year. Um, prior to that, I've, I've got a long and sort of torturous history in IT and tech and this, that and the next thing. I have spent some time with Sky um, in Leeds, so I know, I know this part of the world well. Uh, previously got involved in all sorts of things from open banking to media, um, certain managed services and lots of health. So prior to this I was with Genomics England doing uh, some work on uh, uh, genetic screening of newborns which is very interesting. So uh, all very very exciting stuff but uh, I'll, let's get into the, uh, yeah. let's get into today, today's yeah, subject. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. So hopefully this is what you're <laughs> expecting to, to see this afternoon. Um, who can remember this guy and the regular, the regular <laughs> press briefings, um, his lovely graphs, some of which we understood, some of which we didn't. Um, and who actually visited the, the UK Gov coronavirus site? Yeah, lots of Checking whether it's yeah, safe to go out yeah, and do your yeah. shopping. Which, which village to, to keep away from. Um, it's, it's something that, that I think we all remember with slightly mixed feelings. Who's been on the site recently? Oh, oh, oh this is yes. so, it's all people working people on the project. Involved They're all working the on it. Okay, right. So yeah, yeah, I think that answers that one. Yeah. So let's moving on, move on. So UK HSA and their vision, I'm not gonna read it to you. But vision is very, very important to, to organisations and it's very important to Brendo. We like to know what a company's vision is, what they're trying to achieve and how we can help them achieve it. Now, this is quite an interesting vision because it's huge. So how would you go about getting information to every person, every community, every business and every public service in one fell swoop? Hopefully we're going to share how we have approached that with them. And at some point, it would be amazing to create a, self, a safe and prosperous society as a result of it. We're doing something that really matters. So what have we got right now? We've got one public health dashboard and it is focused on COVID-19. It's good, it received awards, it's easy to, to read, but it was built under pandemic conditions. It was built quickly and it was very, very popular. Can you imagine a, a site that got 76.5 million views in a single day? It's, it's pretty hefty stuff. But that brings a few issues with it. It's expensive. When you're building something quickly, you, you use what's on hand. There are workarounds in there and there are hacks and that's to be expected again when you're building something at pace. It's got a very specific focus. If you're not interested in COVID, you're not going to visit the site. And as we've proved when I said who's visited it recently, the context has changed. We're not quite so interested in COVID as we once were, but there are still threats out there. So where are we going with it? We want to make sure that the context is right. It is somewhere that actually, at some point, you might think, I know where I can get the information I'm looking for. We've got a much wider remit and so much potential with this. 
and we really want to help raise awareness and inform the, the public, but also make decisions and make that information available to decision makers. And look for trends. What's going on out there? What are the statistics that are useful? And make it dynamic. How can we react to those changes very, very quickly? So who is using the current dashboard? So you might look at this and go, oh my god, that's an awful slide. Why has she put this up there? It is intentional. This is a slide taken from our first um, sprint review with the, with the client. And basically, we were trying to find our feet. What, what, what are we looking at? What have we got now? And what needs to change? So this is a dashboard. These are some of the representations of the data that's on there. Any ideas? Not a clue. So we wanted to understand who we're actually building it for. Who's going to use it? All these different ways of using data, do, do people actually like them? Do they understand them? Me, as a, as a user, meh, I don't know some of them. Um, and realistically now, not all diseases have the testing, um, the testing things that were going on. That, you know the, the large public testing for COVID, for example, some some diseases don't have that at all. And then also the maps. I loved the maps. I'm I'm was very attached to the maps. But when all the maps are the same, as things calm down, what use is the map? So those are the kind of questions we asked, and we were very very lucky to be working with the UK HSA user research team. So they came up with a number of different personas. So inquiring citizens, me. Um, I'm worried and I'm concerned and I want to know what's going on. Expert analysts, I want the data to be spot on and I want to trust it. Policy influencers, again, wanting confidence in the data um, and wanting to know if there's something wrong, how it can be fixed quickly. Information foragers, people who are just kind of vaguely interested in what's going on and looking for trends. And then content writers, people who want the facts made very, very easy to, to digest. And yeah, as we noticed yesterday with the BBC picking up on, yeah. on it very, very quickly from a press relief, mm. they want to, they pretty much just re regurgitate the press release, which is good. <laughs> um, technical yeah. builders. Yeah. This is the API one. We have an API um, currently on, on the dashboard, and loads of people use that. Mm. So um, local authorities, for example. And there's, there's one on here that does make me chuckle. Um, we could do it ourselves, but why should we? Fair enough. So that was something to keep going. Mm. Next slide, please. Um, so what did people Quite think, as, yeah, it had to get in there somewhere, didn't it? Um, what did people think as we were building various versions, it's evolved over the last six months and we got user feedback pretty much constantly right the way through and still continue to do so, which is absolutely, it's an absolute mm. gift, it's brilliant. Um, people had comments about count rates and things like that and some people who understood the counts, like, I know what count is, you don't need to tell me. And people who didn't know about counts didn't really care that they didn't know about counts. So that went pretty quickly. Um, we, ha we tried a landing screen. Oh, that didn't land well. Um, so that soon went. Um, so getting this, this um, feedback on the user journey has been absolutely fantastic. Mm. So I think that's pretty much it from me. So yeah, well, on to the stuff. Techie, stuff. techie stuff. Over to you, Ben. Thank you very much. So we had a bit of a chat about this beforehand. We thought it'd be a nice idea to throw this up here. So if any of you are really quick on the draw, while I'm talking, you can quickly scan this and it will, I'm told it will take you, hopefully it will, it won't take you to sort of <laughs> some scam site or something where we'll mine Monero on your, uh, on your mobile phone. Should take you to the, to the, to the dashboard. Um, and I'll quickly go and get the, uh, the bleeper so I don't have to do a Chris Whitty. Uh, right, super. So. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a tech dive here. Um, please, at the end, I guess, feel free to ask and think of technical questions. It would be great to have a bit of a back and forth. Uh, I'm sure there are people here who will be interested in how this is all set up. Um, so we talked a little bit about the, 
the first COVID dashboard and, and, and what, what, it, what it achieved. It, it achieved massive scale. Um, there were, it, I mean, we talked about the number of people coming onto the site, but the point is that everyone came on at once. You know, you didn't, you didn't sort of look at it, well, some people looked at it at 10 o'clock in the morning, but most of them were there at 4 o'clock hitting refresh because they wanted to see the new figures. And that was what was happening. So it was enormous scale. So that was great. The problem was it was built at speed. And if you build something for that sort of scale at speed, what you sacrifice is potentially cost effectiveness. So yes, they got it fast. They delivered one, one thing. They put a lot of information about COVID on it. Great at the time. Um, but yeah, it, it, it cost a bit. So what we wanted was something that was going to deliver really, really good value for money because that's obviously a big deal. We've got to do it for, we've got to do it so that it's cost effective and it delivers value. But we want it to be fast. We want it to be able to use for all sorts of things. We've spoken about having winter viruses on there, the way it's been built out. The, the aim is that it could be used for anything that we desi desired effectively that was important to get across to people. So it had to be flexible and it had to be cost effective and fast. And these things come together, right? Because if you're able to deliver something, a system that's really quick, doesn't use much processing power, and because it doesn't use much processing power, it's cost effective. And not only that, now everyone's into green ops. You know, we're trying to deliver, you know, savings against, um, you know, savings against CO2 emissions and all that sort of stuff. That also means that it's green. So we've been really, really keen as we've been designing this system to make sure that this is a really big deal. And so that from the ground up, we've worked with Berendo to make sure that this thing is, is fast and cost effective. Right. So on the back of that, we... Um, well, I'll start, I'm going to go through the stack here, and um, so I'm starting with the front end because that's the bit that most people see. So the old dashboard has got a, if you're, if, I'll, give you, I'll give you a home time project, which is if you fancy, it's open source software. Go and check out some of the old dashboard. Some of the dev technology that's in use there is very niche. Um, and it's because people, again, they were using what they, what, they, what they had to hand at the time. But if you have a look at the code, you'll get an idea of, of the fact that some of that, it's kind of niche technology. It's not something you'll necessarily be able to easily go out to market and get developers to work on. That made it quite difficult to adapt the old system. And that's one of the reasons we chose to build something from scratch. So we wanted to use a technology that was present in the market and that lots of people available for. Lots of people know React. So we, it's, a, it's a good system. It's proven out. We understand how it works. Great. Brilliant. But it had to be accessible. As government, we need to make sure that the whole population are able to use this thing. And we can't release something that is you know, going to exclude people because, for example, it didn't let them use a screen reader. React is a client-side framework. And a lot of the time, that means that if you've got JavaScript turned off or if you've got... you know if you're doing some sorts of lazy loading, all those sorts of things, um, it, can, it can confuse screen readers and it can make the site inaccessible to some users. So, server-side rendering. By using Next.js, and this came from the Berendo guys, we were able to move to server-side rendering of content, which means that anyone who's using a screen, we can make it extraordinarily accessible. It also means that we can progressively enhance the site for people who have got better systems. So we don't lose completely lose out on all of the good stuff that you get with the client side stuff, but it does mean we can make it much more compatible for people who are using alternate technologies. So that gives you a broad idea of, the, of where we were going with that. The other beauty of this server side rendering is that it makes it easier to cache and because it makes it easier to cache it means we can save money and we can make it fast. So there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so there we are. That system, that front-end system, is plugged into a private API. The private API is designed to very, very quickly surface content. So those numbers, the graphs, all of that sort of stuff, I'll get onto the graphs in a second, but that system is quick. It's all behind caches. And ideally, we only want to run this every time there's a site update. The server should only be hit when there's a site update. Because as soon as that happens, bosh, it's behind a CDN, and that's it. That's done. So we shouldn't be seeing anything on our servers. We shouldn't be seeing any, any activity. Again, make sure the whole thing is fast, cost-effective. 
and lightweight. The private API is lightweight. With the, the data design, we don't want to be calculating things. So all of the data is calculated in ETL prior to hitting that, that system. The private API, it's with great use of denormalization, so we just, whoosh, the data's there and it's ready. We also flexibly generate charts. That's done by the API. That's very impressive, and we should have a whole demo about that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with the, the charts that you see on the site are generated off the back of what are effectively API calls that then return scalable vector graphics. So it's, 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 yeah, it's very witty. It's pretty, really pretty like cool. That. So that, yeah. again, that was a Berendo thing. I'm, I'm, am I dropping the name enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a Berendo down. thing. Yeah, yeah. These guys came up with it. It looked great. A few more points really, really fine. Just, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. So that was, that was good. Um, so that, that was the, that's the private API. That's the, we call it the captive API for a while. It's the, the one that the, the site uses. But we don't want the public using that. It's very specific <coughs> to the dashboard itself. We've got the public API, and this is, this is the bit that's really, really key. The old API on the COVID dashboard as is, is very, very, I suppose it's, it's, not very, it's not very prescriptive. It allows you to, to run all sorts of queries and do all sorts of things which um, we might not expect. And it allows a lot of different search parameters. And of course, you, you put one search parameter in, that maybe gives you 10 different things that you have to look up. You put another one in. It's a bit like the story of the, 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 the chap with the, do you remember the story of the rice? The, the, who does a, he, see, he does a, a favor for the Chinese king right. and says, I, all you have to do is give me enough rice so that I put one bit, then two, <coughs> then four, then, and of course he ends up losing the kingdom because by the time he gets to the end, and that's the same problem. By the time you get to all those search parameters, the, 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 the search space is so massive that it's very difficult to cache that. So we are getting the, that, the public API as is at the moment on the old dashboard, very, very expensive to maintain simply because we could get any sort of re um, request, very difficult to cache. So we had to have a balance between flexibility and cost. And the solution to that was structuring the API. So essentially making sure that if we wanted to ask a particular question, we had a hierarchy in the API. So if you imagine your URLs, well, first we might ask to look, let's say we had a, ge a geographic slice. We might ask to look at London. And then in London, we might say, well, what topics are there in London? I mean, this is one way of looking at it. Well, there's influenza. And then, and break it down that way. And by structuring the API, that massively cuts down on the search space. And it means that the thing can be cached much more easily, easily which means that it's fast and it's cost effective and we're, and we're giving people power. The other beauty of that is, by allowing those various domains that we're showing to be hyperlinked together, it means that semi-skilled users, and we talked about, what did you call them? Data foragers? Data foragers. Data foragers. <laughs> it means that data foragers, so semi-skilled people who, they know a bit of tech, but they're not programmers. Maybe they're in sort of, in areas that are ancillary to tech. It means they can go onto the API and they can search around. They can click around and they can find the data they're looking for. And that, again, that opens up the dashboard and the API to a broader range of people, and it meets this mission of accessibility, and 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 you know bringing people together, and uh, you know what's the word inclusivity? inclusivity that's, that's, that's yeah, the yeah. word. It, it's an inclusive API, which is great. So there we are. I, yes, the other beauty of this is that the the lack of a search, the ability to cache things, means that we can avoid sort of Russian DDoS attacks and things. It means that we're in a better place to respond if we come under very very heavy load. What have we got? Okay. So this is, this is, this is good. Um, so the commitment to open source, the first dashboard, actually enormously great. You can go on right now, you can look at the code. They're very open about the, the, the way that, that things run. And we're going to be putting the, the code for the new dashboard into the open when it, once, once it's live, which is now effectively. Yeah, so it's our now, next yeah. task is to put the code live. Mm. We, there are some really interesting challenges around this. I don't know how many people in the audience here are from a, a from a sort of um, a from a, a sort of delivery background tech delivery background there are challenges here um, the least of which not, not the least of which is the fact that if you've got merge requests and all of that sort of stuff happening in the open well if I make a, a, a comment on a, on a on a on a commit to say this code's a load of rubbish and it's published to the to the internet at large it's not very fair on people that I'm working with. So we have to be a bit clever about the way we do that so that we don't end up in a situation where people are seeing their work publicly critiqued. 
but this is where we're going. Um, the beauty of this, of course, is it means other people can use this, this platform. And, and there's some pretty exciting stuff happening behind the scenes that, 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 that could be you know, happening in the future with that. And, and I'm, I'm really pleased to, to have seen that, that happen. And it means that this work can be picked up by other departments and um, save, money for, uh, save money for other departments too. And sort of, again, give a good return on taxpayer, taxpayer cash. I think that's me over. I think that is that's me. There we go. <laughs> cool. Thank okay. you very much, Ben. Yeah. Right, so I'm going to attempt to tell you how we've done this. Um, we've obviously seen how we kind of got all the built the user stories, the requirements, and kind of why we needed it. Ben's obviously taught you through some of the tech stuff and how that works. What I'm going to try and do now is tell you how we delivered it as a team, um, and then, yes, yeah, some of the challenges we faced. So um, it's probably fair to say the kind of product-led approach and multidisciplinary team, this is a way UKHSA have started to work. We, um, we came in and we committed to that too. It's probably fair to say that this is fairly new for certain areas of the business. There are is, massive yeah. organizations, yeah. multiple yeah. organizations coming together yeah. in the last kind of 12 to 18 months. Mm. That obviously brings plenty of challenges. You've got um, different teams, different departments yeah. used to work in different ways. So we brought in um, kind of this product-led and multidisciplinary team. Being in that position, just to sort of come in there, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Being in that position of having several organizations, you remember when UKHSA, you may not, was created by bringing Public Health England and various other bits and pieces together. It, having exemplars like Berendo um, in, in, embedded in the organization while we're doing that mean, mean that the best practices get pulled into the new organization. Really important. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you, Ben, again for the Sorry. endorsement. Yeah, I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> uh, so, um, and what this allows us to do, importantly, is demonstrate the power um, of Agile for delivering iterative value quickly. And that is really key um, because we need to be able to get things and new features on that dashboard live ASAP. It has to be reactive, as we've talked about. There are threats looming all the time. Mm -hmm. So the ability to deploy things quickly in new code is really important. Um, and we have also introduced um, some new ways of working, specifically from like a team perspective. And we've got Kev at the back there who works in the team, so he can disprove anything that I try and tell you today <laughs> if it's lies. Um, we've done things like this is uh, something quite new to, to how, especially how I've worked before as well as zero story point estimating. And the reason we've done this is because we, one of the first things we did, I remember as a team, and we sat down, we were talking about how do we want to work as a team, because it's kind of one of the things that kind of really we wanted to focus on. I think within about five or 10 minutes of that conversation starting, everyone went, we don't want to do story points. And the reason for that, there's a good reason for that, is story points are a great way to do like a static estimate um, of a ticket. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't tell you how quickly it can flow through the Kanban board to be delivered from the backlog all the way through to actually being deployed live. So we thought, well, how then do we monitor that? Well, we'll use something called cumulative flow, which actually monitors flow time then from, from a ticket through to it being deployed. We Obviously, the general principle that you need to follow with that is that the ticket is as small as it can be. So we are always as a team working to make sure that those tickets are as small as they can be, and then we can actually monitor um, and use cumulative flow to show how quickly we can deploy something. And this is, this is another one where I can... Here you go. <laughs> 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 so one of the things that we've been doing over the last couple of years in, well, principally a year and a half in DevOps in, um, in, in UKHSA is bringing in Dora metrics across, across the piece. So we're monitoring teams on all of those sorts of things that, that Matt's talking about. And, and I can say that these guys are, in terms of, in terms of the Dora metrics, when we, when we do the league tables of teams, and of course we don't, we don't really do league tables, but they, <laughs> they, 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 certainly, they, certainly, um, they certainly do well. I'll put it that way. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's, no, it's very good to see. And so that, that approach has, has, has reaped benefits that, that can be evidenced. And to point out, we didn't know we were being monitored. We no, didn't. didn't they the no system. idea. We've, we've you didn't realise we were doing it. No. Work to stand. No. Hopefully, Kev, you could attest to that. It's worked pretty well. No, they weren't they? gaming the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah we were. So when I joined this squad, they started before I joined. Hmm. I totally freaked out when I saw the board and there was no story points. I thought, how on earth is yeah. this squad functioning? Yeah. <laughs> but what, six, five, six months later? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a squad like it before. And yeah. Like you were saying, I had no idea we were being measured on any of this stuff at all. Yeah, yeah. No, we weren't. We didn't, yeah. It, then neglected to mention. <laughs> a lot of it's automated, so it, it's just a case of you know you had a board, therefore. But uh, no, good stuff. But if anyone wants to talk to me about this stuff uh, after this talk, more than happy to, to explain in a bit more detail. Um, so we'll move on. So here are some of the challenges we faced. Um, 
UK HSA, as we've mentioned, huge organisation, um, loads of different departments teams coming together. So that means ways of working are very different. Agile isn't uniform across all those departments. It is in quite a few, but some, yeah. particularly the data team that we work with, they're not used to agile ways of working. So we yeah. have had to kind of flex and probably, you know, think about how do we, as a team, great, we can work yeah. in a certain way, but however, when we interact with other teams around the organisation, yeah. we need to be very, very it, careful. I mean, yeah, I mean, you've yeah. got, uh, again, within the UK HSA, you've got teams like sort of microbiology and things like that. They're, they're not typically well known for their use of agile delivery. So... Things like that. I mean, you guys are going to, you know, you're going to come up against all sorts of different things, yes, aren't you? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, another thing we found is that requirements change uh, during Dev uh, due to new user insights. Debbie kind of gave us a bit of a slice of like these are some of the insights. We've got multiple different personas, and we uh, always the UCD team are always going out and getting insights off uh, off the customer. And obviously, that means that we're getting kind of new things that they want to see on the dashboard quite frequently. So that has evolved quite a lot, and there's that obviously has led to a fluidity in the design because there are, there have been a number of fundamental changes through not only through user uh, testing there have also been things from like a, does it look enough like a dashboard from a technology point of view um, so we've seen quite a few um, design change from that perspective I think version 9 is what's yeah version on. Yeah. We're, on, we're on version yeah. 9 now that sounds quite scary when you're not involved in it and you don't really understand it. So what we've done um, as a team to tackle some of this is we've done a lot of spike work and we've really kind of gone away and done a lot of prototyping and proof of concepts effectively. So user testing comes in, says, look, the users want to see this. We'll very quickly mock up a, a, mock up a spike. We'll build something from a front end perspective, for example, might be a graph change or whatever. And we get that in front of the customer quickly. And we say, right, is this what you were hoping to see? Yes, tick, great. We'll go on and build it so that's how we've kind of kept ahead of the game a little bit there and then another challenge the kind of the final thing is engagement with other departments as Ben alluded to there's lots of different departments and we um, because they are all coming together so quickly they also don't know how they all work together mm -hmm. as well and what yep. is the process to actually get a product from like an idea all the way through to actually getting yeah. it live with all of the security wrapper, the service yeah, wrapper and all mm. these things. It's, it's an interesting yeah. one. I mean, yeah. we, we uh, I suppose the best way of describing it, if you imagine these organizations that are again coming together and being brought together, you've got things that are everything from, for example, uh, the Couch to 5K app with Steve Cram telling me that he's proud of me. I, I, I love that. <laughs> um, all the way through to very, very, very serious health threats and all sorts of things that you may see in the media. And, you know, have to, so you've got a really interesting for security landscape, very diverse organisation that's being brought together. So, yeah, definitely there are, there are, there are elements where we're, st where, where we're still forming. And um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely speaks to that. Yeah. We've always been a bit of a guinea pig, haven't we? Well, for, so for yeah, for, yeah, for some of it. Yeah, yeah some of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's, that's always good fun. Yeah. Cool. Right. So, um, so just in case you're a bit confused as to what it is we're actually building, <laughs> I thought I'd try and summarise it here. Ben's talked about the front end, how that looks, how we build it, some of the yeah. techie bits. Effectively, the product is a CMS, which kind of sits in the middle and a content creator can go in there and they can generate the page, put exactly what content they want in there with the charts and the chart types that are generated from the API and they can build a page very quickly. So that obviously makes it reactive. Um, but the product really is the CMS. I think, Kev, it's fair to say that that really is the message that we drive into the... Yeah, yeah. was talking about dashboards all the time. We need this dashboard with this thing. And, I'm like, and I sat down with Matt one day and he said, what are we doing here? Like, what is the thing? And it's, mm -hmm. it's just the CMS. Yeah. It's been a real cultural shift, I think, hasn't it? From, yeah. from our other stakeholders in the UK, as you say, to understand. Because they just wanted the COVID dashboard to begin with, didn't they? And he said, yeah. well, no, we're building the CMS with these features yeah. to enable you to make that dashboard. And I think, I think it's clicked now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, so that's the secret sauce. Um, I suppose the, the, the one thing that distinguishes it from, and you'll, you'll get onto this, yeah. is this integration here, isn't it? The yeah, and the integration with the new data pipeline, this is the big one. So it's probably fair to say that the loading of the data into the old COVID dashboard is very manual, very mm -hmm. time consuming. Um, there's a hell of a lot of data to load, as you can see from yeah. all those charts. So what we're looking to do is integrate it with backend pipeline, so it's almost seamless. Um, and eventually it will become streamed is the yeah, long term yeah. goal. So yeah. it's basically no one has to be involved at all. It just streams in and it's real time, constantly updating. Mm. 
Um, we've got the private API that feeds the front end with the latest data. Ben's kind of gone through that, but effectively all that data comes from that private API. And then the big one is the public API that's hyperlinked. So yeah, a user can go in, they can download whatever data they want, they can select metrics, and they can kind of fiddle with it and load it into their own um, Excel spreadsheets, for example. So that's kind of the, the producty tech bit. The other things as well, importantly, um, we need that product to be reactive to new threats, hence why we are so keen on iterative, quick, agile kind of ways of working. We need to be able to like, get things in there quickly from a functionality point of view. A product-led delivery approach, again, working with the business and the product owner to really understand what is it they want, why they want it, prioritize it, make sure the dev team are working on the right things and we're delivering value quickly is super important. We've also been helping to demonstrate the power of Agile for delivering results. Um, again, not every organization does it. Um, we've tried to go in there and kind of champion that and make sure that we're showing that mm. you can do this quickly and safely um, yeah. and, and very much in that way. And then the last one is partnership with UKHSA. It's been, I think, one of the key things we've felt as a team is like we work with UKHSA, but actually we want to feel part of that organization. I think it's really important that we understand the business we're working in very closely and we understand their needs and wants. Yep. Cool. And I think that's it. So we've got time for any questions yeah. if anyone has any. I think we've got a fair bit of time, 20, 15, 20 minutes. So yeah, open to questions.